Oh, look at these big, one, big numbers. Two, they are three, huge numbers. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you want to take this coat off? Nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, Lift five, that one up and six, see what's underneath seven. it. Let's see what's underneath the yellow one. Ooh, now then. Mm. Is that, are they bees? No, they're not bees, are they? They look a bit... No, they're not bees. Flowers! Oh, flowers. I haven't got my little glasses on. So how are you, Agnes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So where have we come to today? Where is this place, Agnes? <laughs> where are we? In my dad's work. In your dad's work? That's pretty good, isn't it? What do you like about coming here? Um, I like the play bit. The play bit, which isn't in here, is it? Do you want so... to show Anna the play bit? Yes. Okay. You go and show Anna the play bit and we'll come and find you in a minute. So, hello YouTube friends. I'm here today with Adam, who's Agnes's daddy. You might have seen Adam before on the channel once or twice, but I've come to where he works today because he's been very responsible for making one of the things in your Christmas box, this one. And um, so there you are, Adam, you take one. Now, every year in the Christmas boxes, <laughs> I write a little book uh, and, it, and the emphasis on the word little but this year I decided I would make far more of the written element of the, of the book. And then I asked Adam if he would work his magic because it was just photographs and words. So what did you do? Well, we discussed how to make something which brought together all these interesting objects. Yeah. Um, each one... How many objects are there? 20. It's been a while since I've looked at this. I know. But it's um, been a way to be printed and everything. It has, yeah. And there are 20 objects in total yeah which is a far bigger book than i usually make and so um so our job was to kind of well to help you try and think about those stories this idea that every object has an interesting story about it and that viewed collectively it's like a little sort of snapshot into your life isn't it yes so um, then so we sort of helped you do that and then anna took some very beautiful photographs Owen took some very beautiful photographs Owen. with his uh, mm. drone. Yes, he did. Flying high. Yes, he did. Um, as well. And then, yes, and then my job was be the designer who then sort of thought about how to put it into a book format. And to choose the colours and yes. the layout, but then making choices because then I just handed it all over <clears throat> and you made this. Uh, Talk a bit, little bit about who printed it and the binding and all of that. Well, I, I design a lot of books. Yeah, yeah. So I spend a so, lot of my time making things. A lot of the time they are magazines or books um, or posters, uh, wallpapers, sort of on the sort of messy sort of walls behind us here. Um, so, and then sometimes I like to print those books. And yes. Kate often shows me good ways of making my own books because she knows a lot more about that stuff than well, me. Well, the little handmade books, um, which is my style, <clears throat> but you take yours to the next level by producing big runs of books. Yes, I also do. So there is things around here. I do print them in this room, but then this book wasn't printed by me. It was sent to a sort of external printer. But we do like to use local printers, so the yes. printer's within about five, ten miles yeah, of here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so rather than, so the, yeah, you don't want to be sending a book to Germany or somewhere no, no. back, because that's quite a lot of... So actually what we try to do is, if we are going to print it in a larger run, that we want to try and work with a really good local printer. So also my job there was to try and make sure I found a good printer for you, yeah. and to think about things like the paper, yeah. uh, to think about how it feels in your hands, yes, and the scale. It's a little book, it's, no, it's a nice little square. Um, that was part of the, you know, this could have been much bigger, and I suppose you see coffee table books with photography that's huge, but actually this, the idea of this was it was be quite small and yes. sort of discreet. Uh, so it's a little square. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, in terms of, I suppose, other details about it, there we wanted something colourful, didn't we? So the spine has all these different colours on it. And that kind of informs this idea of like that every object has a different kind of colour scheme. For and that's it, what so. I loved as well. 
So when I thought about this book, it felt to me a little bit like a museum guide. Mm. That we would have these objects uh, photographed like you would see on a plinth in a museum, but then made very domestic by the words around it and the writing. I suppose that is an inter- it's like a different sort of museum, isn't it? It's your house is a museum, yes, right. your home's a museum. That's right. Uh, but the stories are also, you know, they're not stuffy, are they? They're not written in the way that maybe a, a museum might feel like no. it has to talk. Actually, no. it's very much you kind of sharing your voice around these things, and the stories are not always the biggest things in life. They're That's often right. little memories or really things that tiny. have kind of popped up in your life without expecting. Yes. Because you know? the objects in here aren't... I mean, maybe we should look at some of the objects, but... They're not always, you know, the most expensive things nope. or the nope. largest things. They're they're the little details and sort of and they take on the a significance. To them. That's right, yeah. because of the people or the places or the memory it evokes. Yeah. So the first one's a nice one, isn't it? Because it's Owen's. Yeah. Which is called Owen's sewing. Yeah, and that was something that my little son Owen did when he was three, and he's now in his mid thirties. And so, just looking at that takes me right back to when that little boy was uh, two or three years old. And so, and I think that everyone has got um, stories and memories around things like this. So this is my own personal collection, which actually has no great monetary value, but has uh, a real. Um, uh, nostalgic value to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You can probably think of something that fits into your book of things, can't you? And I think yeah. everybody else can identify with that. Yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I was very pleased that we got the result we did from collaborating with Adam uh, here. So, but we're in your workspace here, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. I've never been here before. Tell us a little bit about where you work. Well, this is my studio. Uh, but where is it? So we're at Baltic Centre of Contemporary Art, which is in Gateshead, in the northeast of England. Uh, this little room uh, is right next to where the sort of kids' play section is. Yeah. So Agnes really does like it, but she doesn't like being in this room because no. outside of here, uh, well, we can't film, you know. But um, yeah. But there's all sorts of bricks and toys there's... and books and so why would a, a you toy want kitchen to be in, and so on. Why like, would you so... want to be in Daddy's boring room yeah. when all that's happening that's outside the door? That's what she said to me earlier on, yes. <laughs> uh, and we had to pretty much like hold her in here for a minute or two yeah. before, but she's gone with Anna to play outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of this room, so I work under the name Foundation Press, which isn't just me. It's me and a colleague called Debbie, who's not, might be in in a bit, but isn't here right now. And we do lots of different sorts of projects, but this studio is where we kind of base ourselves. Um, we, you know, scattered around here is all sorts of different things that we make. Sometimes we make things uh, with community groups. Sometimes we make things with museums and art galleries. Sometimes we make things for ourselves or with artists. Uh, our work sometimes is designing things for people. So this is very much like, you know, we designed this for you or I designed this one. Um, sometimes we really try and make our own books, sometimes we teach workshops, do a lot of education. So there's a lot of involvement with community groups then? Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. And a lot of, um, a lot of thinking about the different ways people make books is kind of a central thread to what we do. So a lot of the time we are helping people to make books or inviting people to be in books that we're making. So that's a common thing that we do. I helped you to make this yes, book exactly. that you've been thinking about for a long time, actually, isn't Absolutely. it? It wasn't like it was an idea that popped into your head. You've been thinking I've been about wanting to make for this time. for a long, long time, and this seemed the perfect opportunity to do so. Yes. So a lot of this design stuff will happen at home. So it tends to be my routine with more design jobs like this is that I get Martha and Emile go to bed, and then I try and get Agnes to sleep. And then I start work on things about so, nine o'clock. Is that right? Yes. So once the family is asleep, I have to, I, that's when you I start work. work. Yeah. So you just do fit it in, don't you, around taking care At of the At the moment, animals. that's the way it works, yeah. yes. And Emile's what, about four months old, five months old? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so quite so a lot of family stuff. He's busy. He's already crawling. He is, isn't he? He's already moving. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of where... So, yeah, so yes, I, I think... Uh, was it in... Around the month he was born, I think I was probably working on this. That's right. In the evenings. You were. So sleepless nights with a bit so of this, design work for Kate. So this came into being at the same time as Emile. Exactly. It's quite nice to think of, isn't yeah. it? And actually, the other nice details in this book is the window, yeah. which I think 
the other nice thing that we really happened in this time is that Martha regilded oh, the stats that's from right. the Oh, that's right. Now, that was a ma an, an amazing time. Yeah, it was sort of there. So that so and so these pictures here. Yeah. Adam's remembering a time just a few weeks ago when Martha, my daughter, came to this window, and it was quite interesting because John sneakily took me. Said, "Mum, my son John," he said, "Can I take you for a walk up the coast?" Nah, I never say no to that. I love going to the beach, and so he took me up the coast secretly. And then they all arrived with all this gilding equipment and gilded the stars on the window. I'll show you a, a picture of that. And, uh, and I came back and there it all was finished. Now, interestingly, this last weekend, Katrina's been to visit me, mm. who made the window 30 years ago. Because yeah. if you look at that picture, you can't see the stars on there at no, all, can you? Yeah. yeah, but now Katrina was, was she pleased. She was so pleased. I think that was why she came to visit, because she wanted to visit her window. And uh, yes, yeah, she was thrilled. So she came from Ireland to um, to, to visit oh, nice. lots of local people. Yeah, um, we had fun sort of planning that. <laughs> There's um, a really great bit of you lying on your back, waving your legs in the air. Yeah. Should we put that bit in here? <laughs> you can, you're welcome to, yeah. That is how I spend a lot of my time. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing was also trying to figure out how... Well, Martha had to learn how, how to gild things. Yeah. So there's lots of wine bottles still at our house With that have been... beautiful gilded images on them. Yeah. Using cheap gold leaf bought from <laughs> the various suppliers. Well, no, it was an amazing thing. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. One of the best surprises. So this beautiful little square book, I always had it in my mind that it would be a little square like that. But then, um, what else would you uh, do you like about how this book looks? Well, I mean, I think there's some really lovely photographs in here, and they really show off. The objects but they also kind of show a bit of the sort of the home that they live in mm -hmm. as well yeah and it was trying to make something that felt um the kind of match the colors of both the objects and your house on the outside is you know has lots of natural colors and on yeah. the inside has quite a lot of unnatural colors very much so so that kind of mix of the natural and the unnatural That's in right. terms of color so some pages are quite sort of bright sort of pink and magenta yeah. so i've got a, quite a pink yeah pink page pink page followed the by prawn. The prawns, yes, and it's sort of violet. That's a colour I sort of yes. often think. Of yeah. Like. Alongside more kind of earthy muted, clay colours and muted colors, things. Yeah. Um, I, spe I especially like the colour of. Um, where is it now? This is my. I think it's almost my favourite page. I can't find it now, of course. But my favourite page is. That's my favourite page. Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. I just like, I think the colours go so beautifully with the bear and the little story is just, everyone's got a little familiar like that. You've got a bear, haven't you? Yes. What's yours called? Uh, Ted. Ted. Agnes now has Ted, but she's really lost interest in him, which yeah. hurts a bit. It does, doesn't it? It's a, it's a hard one, that. And Martha's was other things. Sam. So yeah. Sam and Ted live together in, with Agnes now, don't they? Yeah, so they might have to go to a meal. We'll see. Definitely. But no, that, that's one of my favourite pages. Yep. And the colours were quite hard to get because to start with, they weren't exactly right, were they? And so we did some tweaking back and forth to get the colours just yeah. to look exactly like this. Well, I suppose design's quite, graphic design's quite nice in that sense. Now that it's all digital, yeah. that these things were constructed in a computer, yeah. it allows you to basically keep, yeah. keep swapping and changing and exploring colour swatches and combinations. So... That's a really fun part of it, is thinking what sits nicely, these colours together. Yes. And a lot of my work is kind of just exploring quite simple things, like what two or three colours sit together that's in that's a great ways. page as well. I yeah. love this page. Yeah. So, you know, just and trying to And then another element together. to it was proofreading it, because I wrote it and sent um, the, uh, the documents across to Adam. But then we proofread it and found typos and uh, all of that and spelling mistakes. And then how many times did this get proofread? And we were still finding them, weren't we? That's, the, that's what yeah. happens. And it? then Adam said... Uh, Rita looked at it as well. Yeah, Martha Rita, looked at it. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Anna so. looked at it. I looked at it. You looked at it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you read it through, you'll probably still find there's a typo. Because you said a really interesting thing to me when I said, I think we've checked it as many times as we can. And you said, oh, you'll still find something. You said, because books aren't finished. They're just printed. And I thought that was a brilliant thing to say about books, because that's true, isn't it? Well, I tend to get a book back 
from a printer or I tend to make a book and then I can almost like have a sort of a thought where I'm just like I bet there's a mistake and the first on page 22 and there it is down there and I go to it and I'm like yeah there it is and, and I've spent so long looking at it but then you sort of have this sort of yeah almost like supernatural kind of ability to spot the mistakes I mean they're, they're things that no one else really knows. I haven't seen any yes, and I've read this through since it's been a book in my hand rather than on the screen this is also part of you know there being your stories though isn't it it's um yeah, it's a relaxed sort of way of telling the story. Yes, it is. So. Oh, yeah, there's that relaxed style. But I don't think we've got any spelling mistakes now. Well, let's see. Uh, I, oh, don't set the challenge there. We, for people well, to find yeah, that. Send, tell us if you send it in if you. If you Particularly people that are very good with grammar. And yes, speech. I do try to look after the grammar yeah. uh, and get the apostrophes in the right places, but we're bound to have made a mistake now that I've said that. Yeah. But it was amazing the numbers of times it was read through and sorted through. And yeah. we were still finding mistakes in there. Making books takes quite a long time, doesn't it? And I suppose that this, you know, this is a seventy pages. Yeah, something like that. Um, so it's you know it's relatively small, so you can only think how much it takes to, mm, to proofread yes. a novel. And that's right, uh, exactly. Or a magazine. So I, I often sort of end up making quite small magazines, and they take so long. But they're also lots of different people. Yeah. At least this was just you. This was just me. You know, yeah. you're not having to go back to everyone and be like. Is this all right to change this oh, to no, this no, and, no, and no, that? So there's yeah. a lot of work in these things, isn't there? Yeah. Um, so there we go. There's your book. Let's yeah. see who, what the... I, do, I think the only person who didn't get a credit in here was John. And Martha, she didn't get one either, did she? Martha's been doing a lot of other things for you, hasn't she? She certainly has. So you'll see more of Martha's so that's, drawings. That, actually, soon. that's quite interesting because after working like this so closely with Adam... Uh, people who bought products from the last home he has before and last year there was a tote bag in the boxes that Martha and Adam designed and a tea towel the year before but you're going to be doing quite a bit more work for me now aren't you yes so the look of the last home he house um, things in the future is definitely going to be influenced by Martha and Adam and I couldn't be more pleased about that well me and Martha always enjoy Finding the time to actually do creative things as well yes. as just yeah. work and parenting. And so yeah, it's quite nice. So Martha does the drawings, and then I, I work with her to try and yeah to, to extend those or to figure out ways that they and can make be coloured them applicable or, for the things that I'm doing. So we've got some really nice sort of new designs. I know. Sort of with that. So and, oh yeah, and we were just also we were just showing off. Uh, so the, I Martha guess... did a draw. We've got Agnes's birthday party on the weekend, so. Me and Martha made a little colouring book. It's fantastic. The first time I've seen it today, and it's absolutely brilliant. So it's Agnes's little birthday colouring book. But this, I think this is possibly my favourite page, which is the, um, <laughs> the allotment with potatoes and a mole and little caterpillars and things. So this is going to be a fantastic colouring book that's going in the party bags. So that's my page right there with the cats on. So these books then are going to be in the Christmas boxes that are on sale tomorrow night, the 5th of November at 7 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. So do check Greenwich Mean Time in your local area because sometimes that can be quite confusing if you live in different time zones. Uh, so the boxes are on sale at 7 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time and there's free shipping worldwide and there'll be one of these in every one of your boxes. So uh, if you would like a box, make sure you set an alarm so that you don't miss them. They do go quite quickly. So thanks so much for showing us your workspace, Adam, and thanks for talking about these books. Yep. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted with them. And you know, there's another book brewing in my head now that I'd quite like to write. So I think this could be a series and if at the end of this series you could stick them all on your shelf and you would have all these different coloured spines, would that be cool? That would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be cool. So I've got my next one in my head now. You had a nice video you shot the other day from yes, the, I did. where they're all sort of lined yes, up on right. the shelf. It's beautiful. I'll Just show it to these you. These colourful spines. Yeah, yeah. So that I love the way you've done those. I really do. So thanks very much for talking to us. And we better go and find Agnes now because yes. she and Anna will be playing out in the... Uh, play the play place somewhere. Mm -hmm.